Rocket League Esports is a tight-knit family, but as it continues to grow, a lot of changes have been made. One of those changes is longtime community member and commentator Lawler, who announced he will no longer be on the desk. So to talk about these changes and what the future may hold, let's welcome Lawler to the show. Hey Adam, how you been? Hey friend, how's it going? Very good, very good. Um, obviously big news for you. Um, ever since yep. the announcement came out though, there's been a lot of support from the community. So uh, what did you think about all that? It was overwhelming actually. Um, I made the announcement like at a specific time to know that I would be away from home, my computer and phone would be off, like I could just be absent-minded about it and just enjoy what I was doing with friends and family. Uh, and when I came home, like it was just, it's kind of hard to put into words the amount of support. Uh, I discussed it kind of a little bit more in full about how like we don't really realize the impact that we have when you're a so-called public figure or uh, you're in front of a public audience and what you do. So. Seeing the amount of like replies and support from you know people I consider my idols and everything, like it was it was really overwhelming and uh, it was a tough one to stomach. It was not easy to say the least. I'm sure it was kind of bittersweet because you know you have to accept that you're not going to be on any future broadcast. But at the same time, yeah. you got so much love. And just on that note, like I was, I went through your Twitter and I read it all. And uh, I think one Creep. surprise, I, I creeped a little bit. Um, but honestly, I wanted to know what was, you know, going on. And I saw one Richard Lewis tweeted out about you yep. saying, like, hire this guy. And I didn't even know you guys, like, knew each other in a sense. Like, what did it feel like to have support from big esports industry, you know, like, leaders in a sense? Yeah, there was two that um, – usually I'm not – like, like my friends joke that I'm, like, emotionally dead inside and they're not wrong. Like, I just don't have feelings. So seeing Richard Lewis – so I've worked with Richard Lewis on two events now, one for E-League and one for WSOE when he was a host there as well. Um, and he and I have gotten relatively close. He and I have a similar past. Uh, we connect on a lot of things. But I've always known that he's enjoyed my work, hence him rehiring me for things. But I never knew he viewed me in that – like level or that echelon of talent. So that kind of really solidified it, like seeing him and then Golden Boy, the guy who kind of got me into the esports scene, saying like, he'll always have my back. You know, those things just kind of really let it sink in. Those were the the two major comments that I was just like, damn, like this is actually happening. And uh, that one was tough to stomach. It was just like, those are the ones that kind of brought on the waterworks and I'm like, shit, it's actually, it's actually happening. This is real. So... Mm -hmm. Um, but having their kind of support and their backing and them being and advocating me publicly was uh, it was a surprise. I did not expect it. So, yeah, it means a lot. It means the world. And uh, I love those guys to death. It's so good to hear. Uh, obviously, we think very highly of you. So we are I don't know why. behind you. No. Well, I have to say that it's in the script. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so you've gone into detail on other shows. You've been on podcasts talking about why you left. So we don't, we're not going to rehash it all. But. You know, a lot of time has passed since then. Um, how are you feeling about the situation now? Honestly, it's been a breath of fresh air. Um, it definitely feels like there was a limitation. Uh, obviously, when you work for a developer kind of solely, there's certain visions or things that they want you to accomplish. And even though you don't necessarily agree with them, you're hired to do a job. So you try to perform those to the best of your ability. And it's, it's tough to kind of put what you want aside and now that I have no restrictions on literally anything um, I am freelance to the furthest degree and being able to kind of pick and choose what I do and how I approach things whether it be content creation or jobs that you know I may get hired from thanks to my agency there's a lot of things that you just have the ability to say no to or just if you genuinely dislike something like I got asked to do a premiere broadcast event uh, this uh, yesterday actually and I told him no I didn't like the other guy that was working on it oh. and can be super blunt about like I don't like this guy for these reasons I don't agree with that and if you respect me or think I'm that good of talent you'll respect my decision and they are you know they're willing to accommodate moving forward like they are considering why I don't like that talent we have a meeting about it and these are things that I would always bite my tongue on in the past I would just you know keep my head down, do my job and, and just to perform. And now that I'm in a place where I feel like I've solidified myself as broadcast talent, uh, content creation is going well. I can actually pick and choose and be very vocal about things that I may not agree with and people respect that opinion. So it's been an interesting change of pace. It's been very different um, adapting to being able to be vocal, but still respectful. Uh, and I don't think I'll ever get used to it, but it's been an interesting and welcoming change. 
Do you, the sentiment that you're sharing right now, you know, working for a big league, working for a, a developer of a game that also controls the esports side of it, um, do you think this is like a common uh, circumstance with other esports as well? Um, not necessarily. Um, some developers are harder to work with than others, and that applies across the board. That applies to esports and otherwise. Um, certain developers have different mindsets and different mentalities. They have less experience or more experience. Like there's certain companies that you work with that you're just like, these guys know what they're doing. This is great. Um, and the one I'll always shout out, even though they're not a developer, but the company that I always love working with is Turner. Um, the guys that host E-League, they're professionals. They work in the TV space. They've been doing it for a very long time. And from start to finish, it is perfection and nothing lives up to them when you work with them. Like they just, they handle talent and everything like phenomenally, whether it be, you know, just making sure things on time, itinerary schedules, you just get used to working with them. And then when it comes down to, you know, being paid, everything is on time. It's not something that you have to negotiate. Like it's just, they respect and treat their talent better than anybody else. So mm -hmm. you get used to that and then you go back to other things and you're just like, this is frustrating. Why should we, I shouldn't be arguing about this. Like mm -hmm. respect me as a talent. You know what I do. You know, I'm here. Please take care of that. So, um, some developers are better than it at others. Some are still learning. Some are just inexperienced with it and it gets better in time. But, um, the sentiment is, it's still a new scene. Esports have only been around for you know so long compared to stuff like the NFL, where it's just had its hundredth season. Mm -hmm. There's going to be growing things. Right, right. Uh, let's bring it back to Rocket League because you know it's going into its ninth season now, I believe. RLCS. Yep. Um, do you like the direction that Rocket League esports is going in? That's a hard question. Is it? <laughs> um, yes and no. Okay. Um, I love the eSport itself. I like what it's trying to accomplish. I just don't think the people making the decisions either A, have the empowerment to decide what they want to do or B, have a firm understanding or that they have that lack of experience that they aren't implementing things that need to be done. Um, like my biggest issue with Sonix as a whole is they're very conservative mm -hmm. and rightfully so. You know, they're a small indie company. They can't take the necessary risk that others may and because of that it's not moving at the pace that a lot of us believe it should mm -hmm. uh things like live league play and, and those types of things logistically take a lot of money and because you have a 15 year old threshold or uh basically people that are the age of 15 can come and sign up and actually play your game professionally right it's very difficult to take a 15 year old away from school and all that kind of stuff and have them come to a live event and play week in and week out it's just logistically it's very difficult mm -hmm. so Finding someone that can accommodate or make that work or find a way to schedule it. Like maybe if league play was always during the summer, they could play. It's like there's things like that that just aren't even thought of. And it feels like because they are this small indie company that could, you know, that they they initially wanted 10,000 concurrent in their first week. Like they were happy if that happened. They got 100,000. Wow. Servers got broken. And they still made it through that. So trying to find a way to get away from this mentality of we have to be safe and smart and being able to say, let's take some big risks. And if they don't pay off, at least we'll learn something and move forward. Especially now when you have the backing of Epic, which has a limited bankroll, like we need to see some changes. We need to see some major things happen. And hopefully the Olympics is treated more than just a marketing event to sell more copies of the game. It's treated as a way to get more eyes on the game mm -hmm. and really double down on the eSport because there's a lot of players that are really frustrated right now. Right, right. Uh, you know, with Epic coming in, everyone thought like this was going to be the year where it explodes. But like you brought up too, there's a lot of, you know, restrictions that the game itself comes with with a younger audience. Um, but talking on the eSports talent side as well, um, for the Rocket League scene specifically, uh, what is it like being a talent? Do you feel like there's a lot of opportunities in Rocket League to be talent? Um, if they like you, yeah. Oh, really? Um, it, it definitely feels like there's some favoritism, mm -hmm. and that's necessarily the worst thing. The The frustration I have mostly with the talent is obviously all those guys are family and friends. Uh, more than anything, those guys are the guys I spend the most of the time with, and that goes all the way from the RLCS to the RLRS to CRL to every broadcast that they put on. The family is started with talent so mm -hmm. it's frustrating to see that guys from like the rival series who bust their butts week in and week out with the aspirations to become rlcs talent just get looked over and passed because a former pro who isn't even qualified is someone that they want um and that's part of Sionix's vision you know they they want to have a espn-esque or a sports broadcast and a lot of sports broadcast people will bring in 
former pros. The difficulty, though, is in stuff like the NFL. Those former pros have been media trained and groomed since they were kids. Like they were high school stars. They were college players. They, you know, they've been in front of the camera. They've been poised to do these changes. And if they've had a successful, a successful career, they've been playing for 10, 15 years. So you're talking the difference in age and level of maturity and the exposure that they've had to actually doing that. And now you're bringing in a kid who has been removed from the scene for years, who hasn't been really active, hasn't followed. And those are the guys you're giving the opportunity, even though you have community talent or guys that have been busting their butts week in and week out in the rival series, not even giving a chance. And it's mm-hmm. like that's just frustrating to see the guys that work so hard not even be considered because – you want a former pro who's not even qualified. Right. And then you see them on broadcast and they they poo the bed and it's like, man, what are you guys doing? I um, like how you said poo the bed, you know? I'm trying I'm trying to be PG, okay? I'm you don't trying. have to anymore. That's the whole deal, Waller. I'm, I'm, I, it's, I'm not going to do it, Lisa. All right, all right. All right. All right, but... You know, I want to look ahead because obviously Rocket League is still your baby. You've been there since the beginning. Um, yep. The ninth season's coming up. So, you know, maybe just give us a quick final word. Like, will you be watching? What do you want to say to the crew? Uh, for anybody who likes League of Legends, there's a certain person named Tyler One who likes to do broadcast <laughs> for viewing parties. You might get some of that from me on my stream. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. All right, Lawler. Thank you so much. You know, you have here everyone at Squad supporting you. So best of luck. I appreciate the love you guys.